Do you have white guilt, Stuart? Well, no. You're mixed race. This is what all our kids are gonna look like in 30 years. Hey friends, it's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here to talk about everybody's favorite subject, <laughs> white guilt. While researching white guilt, I came across several differing definitions of the term, and I think it's important to include a few of them here to help fully contextualize it. Let's start with every teacher's favorite source, Wikipedia. According to Wikipedia, white guilt is the individual or collective guilt felt by some white people for harm resulting from racist treatment of ethnic minorities by other white people both historically and currently. According to the anatomy of white guilt, guilt can be experienced by individual persons. It can also be felt by whole societies. A good example is the collective guilt of the German people for the Holocaust. George F. Will, conservative political commentator who I disagree with on virtually every other topic except literally this definition says, White guilt is a form of self-congratulation where whites showcase their innocence to racism. However, feel free to disregard the rest of the article that that came from because it's pretty racist. <laughs> Some people who are white come from the perspective that they're not responsible for their ancestors' behavior so they don't have anything to feel guilty for. These types of people will sometimes even claim that they're the real victims of racism because they're being accused of racism. But other white folks recognize that despite the end of racist institutions like slavery, de jure segregation, internment camps, in the US we still haven't abolished the long-term effects of those institutions and thus they're still benefiting from them. Or at the very least, they recognize that they're not directly disadvantaged by racism in the way that people of color are. If you're curious about learning about the modern day effects of historical racism, I go into detail about this in my Is Affirmative Action Racist Against White People video, which will be linked below. What is my perspective on white guilt? We'll get to that in a second, but you might be surprised. Dr. Willard Galen, professor of psychiatry at Columbia University, argues that much of what people would label as guilt is actually a form of guilty fear, such as a motorist might experience when he is driving over the speed limit and suddenly sees a patrol car behind him. You might recognize him from the opening of Gattaca, a film that... it's okay. It's all right. The motorist is motivated by a fear of punishment rather than a true sense of guilt over wrongdoing. I would argue that a good portion of white guilt stems from this sort of guilty fear rather than true guilt itself. In these instances, white guilt performs a social function, a fear of breaking social codes. In this case, the social code is not being a fucking racist. According to another article published in Frontiers, the function of guilt is to motivate people to avoid socially undesirable behavior. In one of the first ethnic studies courses I ever took in college, I was introduced to a concept called modern racism. Essentially, as time has passed since the legal abolition of slavery, segregation, etc., blatant racism has become less and less socially acceptable. While measures of prejudice such as the Harvard Implicit Association test show that racial bias is far from being eradicated, being considered a racist is socially stigmatized. With complaints from white folks left and right about social justice warriors accusing them of being evil racists, I would argue it's safe to say that explicit racism falls under socially undesirable behavior. I think this might be one of the reasons why we see so many white volunteers going to Africa and posting dozens and dozens of pictures of themselves posing with poor African children on Facebook. Rachel Dolezal also comes to mind. If that woman isn't the prime example of white guilt gone wrong, then I don't know what is. In these instances, white guilt becomes a performative act when expressed publicly. The United States history of violent and systemic racism makes people uncomfortable. Which is still going on today, by the way. When performed socially, the goal of white guilt is to relieve white people's feelings of discomfort and to prove that they're not racist like all those other people. In doing my research for this topic, I noticed that several conservative perspectives were arguing that liberals' goal was to make white folks feel as guilty as possible. Fuck, even large channels like The Amazing Atheist have argued this viewpoint. I'm sorry I'm white! So I don't get accused of only using leftist sources and living in an echo chamber, here's a description from the American Conservative. One of the most persistent tropes on the racial right, side note, I'm not sure what is meant by this term, I googled it and nothing came up, is that major cultural institutions in the United States aggressively push a story of white guilt. The media and the education system, from pre-K to postgraduate, are the most frequent targets of this accusation. Though increasingly, churches are also charged with being strongholds of the social justice warriors. Ugh, social justice warriors, am I right? I'll give this article credit for going on to question the methodology and the accuracy of conservatives who make these claims. Interestingly, they do cite data from a 2016 national election study showing that the majority 
majority of white Americans surveyed don't feel any level of white guilt. However, the study only surveyed about 875 people, so it's impossible to draw any definite conclusions from it. Despite this, the article concludes, even if there is a powerful coordinated effort to shame and demoralize whites, it does not appear to be working. The self-flagellating whites so derided by the alt-right and even many conservatives are a tiny fraction of white Americans. But the question that people holding this perspective really should be asking themselves is, do people of color even want you to feel guilty? <laughs> At the end of the day, guilt is just an emotion. But when expressed publicly in social situations, it often ends up centering white people's feelings in discussions that should center people of color. This leads conversations such as ones about the disproportionate rates at which black Americans are targeted by police brutality, away from people who actually have to worry about being targeted by police violence. Instead, the conversation becomes about consoling white folks who are just really sad that racism and violence exist. You know, the real victims of racism. The question we should be asking is what does guilt actually accomplish? I understand that if you're learning about systemic racism in the US for the first time, it can be deeply upsetting and disturbing. But ultimately, white folks feeling sad or guilty about racism doesn't actually help people of color experiencing that racism. And I think in order to truly challenge racism, people experiencing white guilt need to move past that initial feeling and find ways to channel their emotions into change. Solution? A better alternative to feeling white guilt, which POC don't even want you to feel anyway, is turning discomfort into action. If you see the way that people of color are disproportionately affected by racism, then don't center your feelings in these conversations. Seek out resources if you can. Being informed and reading up on police brutality, white privilege, representation, racial stereotypes is essential to being a helpful ally. You need to know what you're fighting before you'll be any help fighting it. Volunteer or protest if you can. I understand this isn't accessible to everyone. Everyone. See if there are any marches in your area or organizations that work towards eliminating racism and provide resources for people of color. Share anti-racist work and especially perspectives from people of color. Uplift marginalized voices and stand up for them when they aren't there to stand up for themselves. Just a heads up, this video is going to be part of an ongoing open-ended conversation. Based on the comments and where everyone is at, I'm going to be making follow-up videos related to this conversation. So definitely give your thoughts and feelings and perspectives in the comments below. Here's a list of people who have already supported me this month on Patreon. I appreciate this so much. You make my work sustainable and I think you're incredible, so thank you. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Also, this is completely voluntary, but it really helps me out. If you would like to help support this channel and Feminist Fridays, then please consider donating to my Patreon page, which will be linked below. It has a ton of cool perks like exclusive updates, secret vlogs, a newsletter, and a monthly feminist book club, so definitely check it out.